Hello to all you wonderful widow warriors. It's so nice to have you back. Thank you for joining me again on the podcast. Today, I want to talk a little bit about being your own cheerleader. And I want to cheer you on a little bit because we all need it sometimes, right? You know, we're, we're thrown into this world of grief, a world we don't know, we don't understand, we don't like. And it brings up so many unwanted thoughts, feelings and emotions that make us feel deeply uncomfortable, quite ashamed and really, really doubt ourselves. And I kind of want to help you remove some of that doubt. I want to help you be kinder to yourself, to understand that what you're going through is absolutely huge. And you need some time, some space to acknowledge that and to show yourself some grace, some kindness, some compassion. Because when we're thrown into this world, we suddenly become our own worst enemy. And we're already pretty bad at it in life. You know, that the first thing we'll do is put ourselves down. Um, and grief, I feel, exacerbates this. You kind of, you, you, you doubt yourself. You doubt everything you do, every decision you make. You think, oh God, am I, am I doing this wrong? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing it this way if my loved one was still here. Um, how would they do it? You think, you, you know, you think you can't do it. You know, even if you've got the answers, you think I can't, I just, I just can't do this. This, this is not within my capacity. This isn't what I know. This isn't what I understand. I'm not good enough. I don't understand this enough. I don't know this world. I don't know where I'm heading. I've lost, I've lost clarity. I've lost focus. I've lost my vision my confidence, my identity, my companion. I mean, the list goes on, right? You, you know, and you kind of think, this is never going to be okay again. This is it. My life is over. My best days are behind me. And I'm never going to be okay. <laughs> but you are. You can do this. You can do hard things. Look at everything that you have faced up to this moment in time, wherever you are in your journey, however far into it you are, you will have faced so many challenges already. You will have overcome so many bumps in the road. You'd have, you know, walked through them, crawled through them, <laughs> however, you, you know, you've done it, you've done it. And you might have had to reach out for some support. You might have faced it all by yourself. There, there, there are, you know, different ways that, that people do this. There's no right or wrong way. And I think we get incredibly caught up in thinking that there is a right and a wrong way. And you're getting it wrong. You know, you're, you're doing it all wrong because so-and-so isn't doing it this way. Or my friend said somebody they knew isn't doing it this way. Therefore, I'm wrong and I can't do it. You can, you are doing it. You've got to learn to speak more kindly to yourself in your own head. The relationship you have with yourself is the most important relationship you are going to have with anyone in your entire life. And the better your relationship with yourself, the better your relationship with other people will be. Because you will be coming from a place of kindness, of compassion, of understanding and of empathy. But if you can't give that to yourself, how can you give it to others authentically? I mean, really? So when you find yourself putting yourself down, doubting your abilities, your capabilities, your knowledge, your power, your strength, whatever it is, Turn it around, turn it around in your head. Don't think about the one thing you haven't done. Think about all the things that you have done because I'm telling you now, if you were to write a list, there'd be more on the things that you have done and you have achieved than there will be on the things, on the list of things that you haven't done or you feel you haven't achieved well. 
because this is hard. This is a really hard journey and it goes on for a very long time. And if you don't understand the importance of being kind to yourself in that journey, it's going to be a lot harder than it already is. I know because I, I kind of learned the hard way myself. And I know because I go through this with clients all the time. The words you use in your head, they are so important and they have such an impact on the outcome of how you feel and how you behave. We've got to learn to look at ourselves in the mirror and go, you are amazing. You get up every day, you face the world, you tackle whatever is, is sent your way and you deal with it. And you do it with, with kindness and compassion and strength, you know, and, it, and we don't recognize that enough. We really don't. It is going to be hard. I'm not saying it's not. And there are going to be some, some you know, deep, deep lows. But in those moments, don't beat yourself up for them. You're not being pathetic. You're not whining. You're not being miserable. You're, you're not, you know, throwing yourself a pity party and wallowing because this, this, is, the, this is the language I hear, you know, this, and, and this is the language everyone hears. Oh, you know, it's, oh, so I'm just, I'm just being pathetic. Oh, I, I'm, I'm just feeling useless today. I'll get over it. I'll be all right. I'll, I'll pull up my, my superwoman pants and, and, you know, it'll all be okay. You, you, you're grieving and grief is going to come with many, many, many thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And they are gonna come at you sometimes like a tsunami and they are going to wipe you off your feet. Literally, if you haven't already, you will find yourself on the floor at times, not able to pick yourself up, sobbing your heart out, not knowing what to do, where to turn. Are you ever going to get out of, of, of this kind of, cry that you're having you know the really ugly cries that we have but you do you do work through it and you do get up again and it does settle you know everything settles nothing is permanent but you have to allow yourself the time and the space that you need to work through all the different thoughts feelings and emotions that are going to come your way None of them are wrong. None of them are bad. They just are. And if you can show yourself some compassion and some grace in those moments, they will feel just that little bit lighter than if you are giving yourself a hard time. You're amazing. You're so amazing. You need to see it. You need to focus on that because you're probably so focused on what you feel isn't amazing, you're missing the point. <laughs> you're, you're, you're missing what is actually going on, what is real. You're gonna be telling yourself a whole lot of stories. Are they fact? Are they real? What evidence have you got to back up those stories you're telling yourself? Ask yourself that. You know, when you're saying, I can't do this, this is too hard, I'm not good enough, I'm getting it all wrong. Really think about that. Ask yourself those questions. Are they true? Are they 100% fact? What evidence have I got to prove that? And then flip it. And then think, do you know, I can do this. I am capable. I am strong. I might not have all the answers now, but I will figure it out as I go through this journey. Because if you think about it, that's all you've done up to this point anyway, is you've figured it all out. You've never, you've never really known anything. You might think you have, <coughs> excuse me. You might think you have, but you haven't because we, never, we don't know anything really. You know, we, we plan for things. As we know, those plans can kind of just kind of blow up in our faces in any given moment. Sometimes the plans work out, sometimes they don't. But when they don't, you figure it out. And that's exactly what you're doing now. And that's exactly what you're going to keep doing. So if you haven't got the answers to some big questions yet, if you still don't know 
what it is you want, where it is you're heading, how exactly you're going to deal with this. Don't worry, it will come. It will come. But beating yourself up for not having the answers is not going to help you in any way, shape or form. You're not expected to have all the answers here and now. Is if any, any of us got all the answers here? You know, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm nearly five years in now. Um, this is not where I thought I would end up. <laughs> Even in my wildest dreams, this is not what I thought would happen. But it's happened. And I love it. And I'm so glad it's happened. But it wasn't, it wasn't what I'd planned. I guess none of this is what any of us had planned, is it? So please, you know, just... Keep reminding yourself when you wake up in the morning, find yourself a positive quote or an affirmation, a, a picture that makes you kind of feel invincible because it's something you did that you achieved. Put it by your bed so it's the first thing you see in the morning. When you go to bed at night, think about three things in your day that you're proud of, that you feel are wins. And God, you know, if you're in the early days and you've literally got up out of bed, you might have had a shower. Maybe it was a wash. You may have had something to eat. OK, might have been a sausage roll and a chocolate bar, but you ate and you washed and you cleaned your teeth. They are wins. OK, when you are in the darkest of places, that is a win, because I can tell you now, I bet all you wanted to do was stay under the covers, sleep it all away and wake up when it's gone. Because that's what we want, right? Getting up every day, facing the world. That, that takes energy, you know, that takes commitment, that takes courage, that takes strength, that takes will. And, and we, we don't even recognize these things. We are not celebrating them as wins. We're, instead, we're going, oh, I didn't do anything today. I just I kind of just got up and I had I had a shower and then I lay on the sofa and I had a sausage roll and a chocolate bar. Change the story. Change it. Just go. Do you know what? Regardless of how awful I felt today, I still did those things. And as you go through your journey, those wins are going to get bigger. Recognize them. Recognize what you're proud of. Be your own cheerleader. Shout them from the rooftops. Write these things down. You know, please, you know, it's it's kind of we go into self-destruct mode at a time in our lives when we need to be encouraging ourselves and loving ourselves that little bit harder, that little bit stronger, that little bit kinder. We need that compassion. We need that love. Because that is what is going to get you through. It is what's going to bring a little bit of light and a little bit of hope to a very, very dark place. You are amazing. You are so capable. You are going to amaze yourself if you haven't already with the things that you are going to achieve, the, the challenges, the obstacles that you are going to work through, that you are going to overcome. And you're going to do it with pride. And you're going to look back and go, oh, my God, I did that. I remember when Simon first died, we had a caravan, we went on our caravan holidays, wasn't particularly my choice, um, more of a five star hotel kind of girl, if I'm honest, but he bought the caravan to the table, the kids loved it, and as time went on, I actually grew to, to love it and see the, the joy in it, that it brings to, to family life. When he died, I was like, well, we're going to have to sell the caravan, I can't, I can't do that, I can't tow a caravan, I don't even know how to set it up, you know, we, he would tow the caravan, he would hook it all up drive us to wherever we were going when we got there I would take the kids off and he would set it all up and put the awning up and plug it in and all those things I had no idea if anything went wrong I'd be like uh Simon something's gone wrong can you come and fix it <laughs> and that that's how it worked I didn't have a clue didn't have a clue but as time went on I thought Do you know what I don't I don't want it to be the end of our caravanning days Simon bought this to the table it was something he adored. It was, it was a way of staying connected to him. It was a way of continuing that, that tradition with the children. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna figure this out. So I booked myself onto a towing course. I found a, a, a family friend that had a caravan and came around and gave me lessons. And he talked me through all the, the tires, the electrics, 
the, the all the switches, um, the, the water. Honestly, it, 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 it's endless, and I was mind blown. He, ha he had to come around quite a lot <laughs> um, to, to show me what to do. Um, but I did it. I worked through it. I booked my first trip away. My best friend's got a motorhome. So um, we met in Burford, which is literally like 40 minutes up the road. Because I thought if anything goes wrong, my dad can come and get me. OK. Or somebody can come and get me. It's, it's not a million miles away. And it's, it's a fairly main road to Burford. I knew where I was going. You, you know, <laughs> I did that. I achieved it. And my God, when I got to that place and I set it up and we were all good to go and me and the girls, we were like, yes, we did this. We did this. We didn't know how to do it, but we figured it out and we've done it. And it was such a good feeling. I soon crashed again afterwards because then it's like, great. So now we're on a caravanning holiday and Simon's not here and it kind of feels really rubbish. But I've continued with it. We have continued to go caravanning. We, you know, we have learned. So I've even bought a new caravan. I've upgraded, um, got a bigger one, <laughs> even harder to tow. But the girls are growing. And, you know, we have Simon's hat in the caravan. He still comes with us every time. But I'm so proud of that. Um, among many other achievements um, that I didn't think I was capable of, that if Simon hadn't have died, I would never ever have towed the caravan. I would never have learned how to how everything works and how to set it all up because I didn't have to. But when you have to, you really do start to reveal parts of you that you never knew existed. And I know it's under really rubbish circumstances that you're figuring these things out, but take the wins take the learnings from it, really look at you and go, do you know what? This isn't my ideal, but I've done this. I've achieved this. I've risen up. I have faced the challenge and I am flipping awesome because sometimes you are absolutely going to be blown away by your awesomeness. Absolutely blown away. Don't don't diminish it. Don't put it down. Don't go, well, I had no choice, did I? Or oh, what, you know, what else was I supposed to do? And well, you, of course you had a choice. You have a choice in everything. If you want to stay in your house from the minute your, your loved one dies and do nothing, that is within your gift. You're allowed to do that. And no one would blame you either because it's rubbish. But you haven't chosen to do that. You've chosen to get up and get on and recreate a life and memories and, and joy, you, you know, you're, you're kind of making those choices. Celebrate that because it takes courage. It takes so much, you know, and you're doing that and you're making those decisions and they are awesome decisions to make. So I just wanted really to come on and, and say to you, pick yourself up. Support yourself in the best way that you can. Recognize your wins. Stop putting yourself down. Stop doubting yourself. Stop thinking you're doing it wrong. There is no wrong. There is your way. It's very personal and it's very individual. And there is nothing wrong in anything. Some things might not work out the way you plan. That's okay. You're figuring it out. You're not going to make the right choices for you all the time. That doesn't mean you're getting it wrong. It just means you need to find another way. And that's okay. You know, there'll be nights when you drink too much. There'll be nights when you meet someone and spend the night with that you probably shouldn't have done. There'll be, there'll be weeks and months on end where you eat too much and you probably put on a few stone. There'll be lots of things that you do. But why are you doing those things? You're doing them because you're sad and you're trying to fill a hole. This huge void that has been left behind. It's common. You're not the only person that's done it. God, you know, I, I kind of, I ate too much. I drank too much. I spent a lot of time dating people I probably shouldn't have been dating. I spent money on things I probably shouldn't have spent money on that didn't really serve me in, in any way whatsoever. Do I regret it? No, because it's all part of the journey. You know, I was doing the best that I could at the time with the knowledge that I had. And I needed it. I needed those distractions. I needed to not feel like a grieving widow all the time. 
So do the same for yourself. You know, you're, you're figuring this out. And the only way sometimes to figure it out is to try things out. So, you know, you, you've, you've got to try because if you don't try, you don't know. It might be the best decision you ever made. It might not. But hey, you're figuring it out. It's all part of the rich tapestry of life. Anyway, go be amazing. Go figure out how to do this. And if that involves staying in bed for the whole weekend and just spending some time being sad with your grief, connecting to your person, that's fine. But if it involves going out, having fun, seeing people, having the time of your life, that's okay too. Anything goes. Just go with it. Allow yourself whatever it is you need and recognize your absolute brilliantness, your awesomeness, your amazingness. You are a shining star. And honestly, you just are amazing. Don't ever, ever forget that. Sending you all lots of love and I will speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.